Eh, buenas tardes y, y gracias por venir y acompañarnos esta tarde en, en una actividad que consideramos que es de gran importancia eh, para el país. Eh, decía mi abuela que del mar lo único bueno que viene son enfermedades y piratas. Y creo que la, la, el, la actitud o ese comentario refleja la actitud de, de mucho de lo que históricamente ha, ha sido la relación de nuestro país con los mares. Entonces es un área que eh, generalmente no hemos apreciado, a pesar de su extensión, más de 600 mil kilómetros cuadrados de nuestro territorio bajo mar, eh, y sin embargo, eh, ligeramente nos percatamos de eso y, y escasamente tenemos algún tipo de eh, actividad normativa, marcos regulatorios, eh, que tiendan a ordenar las actividades que el ser humano hace en esa extensa extensión de nuestro territorio. Y esto que que aún así eh, es un área en la que cientos de millones de dólares son generados en actividades pesqueras, billones de dólares, miles de millones de dólares son generados en actividades turísticas que, que están relacionadas con el mar. Hasta ahora, generalmente, los esfuerzos que se han hecho para ordenar las actividades en el mar han sido esfuerzos sectoriales, monosectoriales, eh, con muy poca integración eh, entre las agencias o entre los sectores que generalmente, más que coordinar, se ven como adversarios y generalmente con muy poca participación de los usuarios y de las comunidades costeras dentro de estos procesos. Realmente eh, las decisiones que se hacen sobre, sobre el manejo de un sector X en el mar muy pocas veces involucran al sector comunitario de nuestras costas. Mientras este patrón de uso se da, eh, muchos de los recursos se están perdiendo. Las pesquerías básicamente están colapsando en una gran cantidad de las especies. Nuestras playas, que son el centro de una industria multimillonaria, se contaminan por plásticos, se erosionan y se ven afectadas por desarrollos inmobiliarios y turísticos desordenados. Eh, Marviva quiere traer hoy a la atención del público en general la necesidad de que empecemos a ordenar las actividades humanas en ese extenso territorio eh, que nos toca eh, usar y disfrutar. A través de procesos más integrados, más multisectoriales, más participativos. Necesitamos desarrollar un acuerdo por medio del cual nos pongamos de acuerdo los diferentes sectores sobre cómo vamos a utilizar ese extenso territorio. No cómo un sector va a utilizar ese territorio. Es decir, esto no es un esfuerzo del sector conservación o del sector pesquero o del sector turístico. Tiene que ser un esfuerzo integrado de todos, porque después de todo, el mar es de todos. Hoy quiero introducir a los participantes que van a estar con nosotros esta tarde. Eh, la agenda que ustedes probablemente recibieron la vamos a invertir en el orden, o sea que el tercer expositor va a ser el primero, que es decano de la Universidad de California en la Escuela de Ciencias Ambientales y Manejo, y que nos va a hablar hoy sobre la tragedia de los comunes, las experiencias del manejo de las pesquerías en California. Y sin más introducción, pues dejo a Steve a cargo de la palabra. Steve, all yours. Gracias, Jorge. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm delighted to be able to uh, open this uh, symposium. And I am going to uh, set the stage for my colleagues uh, in terms of talking uh, broadly about the nature of the problem in the oceans and talk about some of the types of solutions, particularly solutions that are spatial and that involve Uh, doing things in particular places that we can use to help solve some of these problems. And my colleagues will then be put, this, put these uh, kinds of activities into a broader planning exercise. So uh, as everybody knows, oceans are uh, very valuable. They're valuable as a source of food. About 20% of the protein that humans consume on the planet comes from the sea. It's the main source of protein for more than a billion people. Um, they're an important source of income from a variety of different uh, approaches. More than 50 million people fish for income. It's the primary source of, and 
Coastal tourism globally is worth hundreds of billions of dollars per year. It's also a major source of inspiration for a whole variety of other kinds of uh, human aspects. Uh, for a very long period of time, uh, most people viewed the ocean as essentially endless in its bounty. This is true whether you were thinking about it as a source of food or a place where we could uh, dump our waste. Um, but despite the fact that the ocean is very large, uh, this view that the ocean is endless um, is clearly not correct. And we have learned from a variety of different scientific studies, particularly in the last 15 to 20 years, that there, the impacts of human on the sea are quite large, and there are a number of problems that we need to fix. These include uh, the collapse of many major fisheries, the fact that the total amount of seafood that has been able to be produced by the sea peaked in the late 1980s and has been going down slightly since, uh, so a number of different problems. But I think the easiest way to demonstrate the impact of people on the sea is with the following illustration. When I was 10 years old, um, if we mapped out the part of the sea where the to we were fishing at full capacity or over-exploiting the fish, these are the red areas of the ocean at that period of time. 30 years later, when my daughter was 10 years old, this is the same picture. A, a dramatically different view in terms of the human impact on the planet um, from the perspective of the sea. Part of the reason that we uh, were able to continue to have an increase in seafood production going up to around 1990 was because fisheries were able to move to other parts of the ocean that previously were not being fished. Um, that's no longer an option. And so we really need to be focusing on, not only in terms of this particular problem, but a wide variety of ocean problems with finding solutions to these problems uh, rather than moving to different places. Currently, if we look at the global status of fisheries, um, in a new assessment that will be coming out soon for looking at thousands of fisheries around the world, about 42, a little over 40%, are in a state of uh, being depleted in a collapsed fishery. Another 40% are in a status of relatively low abundance that would be well below what we would hope in terms of uh, the benefits that they potentially could provide. So there's a big challenges um, and we need to be focusing on solutions. Now I've only talked about the problem from the standpoint of fisheries and most of my talk is going to be focused on fisheries. But I think the messages that I'm going to make in terms of the types of solutions and where we need to look apply to a much broader array of problems. And uh, there are many other challenges associated with the oceans and thinking about how we actually tackle these in a coordinated way as opposed to uh, looking at them individually is going to be a major focus of the next two talks. But I believe there are really two classes of solutions that have been emerging, and I want to talk about the scientific evidence for what they do and what role they might play in a broader strategy of, of solving ocean problems. And they, they fall into two general classes. One is a variety of ways of essentially buying insurance for the kind of ways that we interact with the environment. And by insurance, I mean uh, it effectively, it doesn't, we're not fixing the problem in the sense that we're not uh, solving what the problem is that's generating an environmental challenge, but we're finding some way to isolate that or take some places and buy insurance to where they can be pr protected despite the fact that we're not fixing the problem elsewhere. The other is to think about how we actually fix these problems. And from the standpoint of fisheries, I'll be talking about this from the standpoint of what are the new emerging uh, tools that can be used for thinking about uh, effectively fixing some of these major management problems for fisheries. So let me start with insurance. The insurance problem from the standpoint of looking at fisheries um, is in the, has been in the form of marine protected areas where we set aside places that are where certain kinds of activities are restricted. In some cases, in, as in no-take marine reserves, 
these would be places where no fishing of any form 